Uh, oof -da. Hey everybody, I apologize for being late. Um, I just, I found some more Christmas lights and I was trying to string them up and I lost track of time. Um, so welcome, hello, I am Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman. And I am still actually getting ready, so bear with me for a minute or two. Meanwhile, you can see, we've got our virtual fireplace going. We have our socks up, our Elvis socks. We've got Jack Lowe holding up some of the lights. So, and in case a lot of you didn't get the memo, I decided that, geez, I'm a mess. <laughs> um, because solstice is coming up, I thought instead of doing our regular six cards for people, that I would do a full reading for everybody. So, I apologize again. I actually started getting ready like a half hour ago, and I got so wrapped up in things that I am late. Okay, there it is. I'm trying to hold my phone with one hand and dig through my drum bag with the other one to find stuff. Oof -da. So hello and welcome. I am Patrick, your friendly neighborhood shaman, and I am so glad you're here. Um, and like I just said, I am going to do something different tonight. We are going to do, I'm going to do like a full card spread for the community, seeing as solstice is this coming Thursday. So, there we go, I got the Christmas tree. The hat sits for me, but oh well. So I hope, sorry for any inconvenience. I know some people were probably expecting their usual one card readings, but it's kind of a, to me, it's kind of a good thing at least quarterly, like during the solstices and the equinoxes, to do a, a deeper dive, all right? And so I'm going to pull my regular spread of five cards, and I promise you, if you are watching this, that whatever, this, this is going to pertain to you as if it was custom made for you. That's just the way it works. So, oh, and I got my my Christmas sweater with the unicorns and the jackalopes. I'm festive. So, um, I feel like I'm missing something. I, I was so freaked out about being late. Oh, good. I'm glad that sounds lovely, Anna. I don't want to disappoint anyone, and I know people probably have questions they need answered or whatever, but I promise you that not everything I say tonight might pertain to you, but something will, I promise you. And so, and my only... The only fee that I ask is that you would please share this video. Um, you can invite people to watch. You can share it on other people's walls. You can um, tag people in the comments. But please share the love. Am I forgetting anything? I feel like I need to stop and take a breath because I've been rushing around and my jackalope kept falling off the wall and... Let's all take a deep breath. Take a, take, take a deep breath in and hold it for a moment. And let it go. Take another deep breath in and hold it. And 
and let it go. And we welcome and we thank the spirits of all our animal guides, our totems, our power animals for guiding us this night. Go on, Missy. My own little power animal here on my lap. <laughs> Go on, Missy. Hi. She's gonna help. So so when I when I pull so this will be for anyone who hasn't had um, an individual reading with me, this will be a good example of what you get when you come to see me one on one. So I pull five cards and they're kind of in a cross. I'll show you when I get them get them pulled. They 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 I lay them out in like a cross formation. Actually, it's it's like a medicine wheel. And so you've got the four cardinal points, um, northwest, south and east, and then the center card, which is spirit. And I will show you in a minute. And also I have my PayPal and my Venmo link at the pen to the top of the comments, my tip jar, if you would like to donate, support your friendly neighborhood shaman as I do my work so that I can focus on my work and serve my community, which is me. So. All right. I'm having technical difficulties and I don't know why. Anyway, so must be the, um, what do they call it? Like Mr. Bean is like the, and in some Christmas traditions, they have cakes and whoever gets the cake or the piece of cake that has the bean in it is the king of fools. And they get to actually pretend like they are king and they get to, and this is like, like medieval times, etc. And they really did get to, for one day, make, make commands and usually commanded the poor to go knock on the door of the rich people and demand food, stuff like that. So it's like that's who's kind of taken over tonight. It's, everything's feeling a little weird. Okay. So we're doing this as kind of a, a touching base, checking in, diving deeper to see where we are situated at this, this point on the wheel of the year, to find out where we are, to take stock of where we are, and to see what we might need to know in our days to come as we move closer to the light half of the year, right? Solstice is the time of, it's like solstice night is the longest night in the year. But because it's the longest night, it is also the birth of the light because from solstice on, the day gets longer and longer and longer until the daylight, the, the period of daylight overtakes the period of darkness. And then we, we go into the light half of the year. So we're at the point where light is just being born, right? Um, so let me show you. These are the cards that I pull. We have armadillo in reverse in the east. We have possum down in the south, he's upright. We have bear in reversed in the west, beaver reversed in the north, and hummingbird reversed in the middle, in the center. So, those are the cards we have. Hi Tara, welcome. 
I'm glad to see you. We're just doing, we're doing a full spread tonight for everyone to, for the community to see where we are and where we're going from this point. So, um, what's interesting about tonight's spread is the fact that we have four out of five cards all facing the same way. They are, they're reversed, but that is not a bad thing. Um, there is no such thing as a bad reading. There, it is kind of a retrograde spread, huh, Valerie? Um, Kira, I just realized that I had something here that she could have gotten into and I don't see it. So one second, I need to check the kitty. Defused. Alexa, turn the music down to one. All right. <laughs> okay, I am back. <sighs> Thank you for your patience and your persever perseverance. Um, it is a really weird night. Could be Mercury retrograde, could be being so close to the dark of the moon, but anyway, whew, thank you for sticking with me. Oh, that's a great song. All I want for Christmas is you. I don't know if I have a favorite Christmas song. I love I love the really old carols, like here we go, a wassailing among the leaves so green. And I saw three ships a sailing in on Christmas day, on Christmas day. I saw three ships a sailing in on Christmas day in the morning. Anyway, so to start our, our spread, I like to, so we have four out of five cards in reverse. God, what a disjointed <laughs> night. Oh my God, thank you guys for sticking with me. So of the five cards, we have four cards that are all facing the same way. And that is way beyond the law of averages. There should be at least two cards facing the other way. And so the first, just off the bat, I always take when this happens as a thumbs up from the universe, like, you are exactly where you need to be when you need to be there because the universe had to defy the law of averages in order to show you how well you were doing. So, I am going to start in the east, which is air. So that's the mental realm. And so in the east, we have armadillo in reverse. And so armadillo is about boundaries, really. And it's about digging in. Um, it's, a, it's a lot about like claiming, claiming your ground, standing your ground, right? Um, and digging in. Because let me, let me focus a little bit because it's like this new stuff coming through that I hadn't said before. Um, basically, armadillo is 
about those those boundaries, drawing those boundaries around yourself, drawing your boundaries, and realizing this is the part that I've, I've that's never come to me before with armadillo, but it's it's like realizing your own self worth, realizing that your worth is non negotiable, your well being is non negotiable. Okay. So it's kind of like learning to ignore the opinions of others, um, worrying about what are, others are thinking, <coughs> and standing your ground, right? Um, I had a friend, like, I have a friend who is a photographer, and every once in a while she comes up to Seattle. And the last time she did that, um, I went to the studio with her and there was kind of this loft where I could kind of hang out while she was doing the photography and everything. And I was feeling, it was like I was behind a curtain. I was up there being quiet, reading a book. And, but I still felt really conspicuous and I, I just felt out of place. Like I didn't belong there. Like I was out of, yeah, out of place. And in between, um, her clients, I, I was like, told her, I was like, I feel like I don't belong here. And she's like, wherever you are is where you belong. Own your space, right? There is no place that you don't belong. Wherever you are, that's where you, <laughs> wherever you go, there you are, right? But it's, it's like really about owning your space. We, we, we're raised to think that we are less important than anyone else. That, that if there's tension, if there's conflict, that we must be the one in, that's in, um, at fault and we back off, right? This is realizing your worth and not backing down, holding your ground and if they come at you, you roll up into a ball. It's like non-negotiable. You don't fight back because fighting back only validates whoever is coming at you, right? But because you know, it's kind of related to porcupine medicine where it's the innocence and the authenticity of porcupine from which those quills radiate, right? And so it's by being in that innocence there is nothing that can threaten him. And it's similar with Armadillo because all he has to do is roll up in a ball and he's safe. Um, and the, the thing, the, another similarity between Armadillo and Porcupine is that both of their defenses, whether it's the quills or the armor, um, the armor on Armadillo's back is simply a higher density of hair. It's, it's hair that's packed in harder. And, and so it's actually a part of armadillo. It's not something he puts on for defense. It is a part of him. And it is, um, it's kind of a real balance between the masculine and feminine, right? The masculine, the hard protective layer that allows the, the soft, more organic feminine to thrive, right? So you've got this shell, just like, like the cell of a sheep, the shell of a seed, um, or the shell of an egg, right? That protects the growing and the soft, moving and thriving and evolving being on the inside. And so by having those boundaries, it's, it's, not an, it's not an either or, it's a both and. By having those boundaries, that's what allows you to allow that inner softness to, to thrive. Exactly, Feather, long-term defense as opposed to hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's like, and it's just, it, and it, it's, it's, um, 
Well, okay, so I met, I showed the cards earlier, if you weren't here earlier. Um, but in the south, we have a possum, right? This is akin to possum. It's like playing possum. Like someone challenges you or someone is questioning you. You have every right to say, stop. I'm dead to that conversation. I'm going to play possum. I'm dead to that conversation. We are not talking about it because it's non-negotiable. It's not a debate. It's my truth. And so this is about digging into your own truth and valuing it enough that you you don't fight. You know, as soon as, as someone has you defending yourself, you've lost. You know, a lot of people just try to rile up other people, right? And so if they can get you off balance or they can get you arguing, it doesn't matter what the subject matter is and it doesn't matter whether they win the argument. They already won because they drew you out of your shell to try to defend yourself, right? But you don't need to defend yourself. Who you are, the truth of your being is self-evident and it, it doesn't need to be... Um, well, it's, it's like that thing about a lion doesn't have to um, defend the fact that he's a lion, right? He doesn't have to go around, hey, I'm a lion, so watch your step. Hey, I'm a lion, so, you know. No, it's like a lion is a lion, and you see a lion coming, you know exactly what you're in for, right? And it's the same, it's like you, you don't need to justify or ask permission or make excuses for who you are, for what you like, for, you know, any, anything about you, right? Like in, in Star Trek, the big thing is IDIC, infinite diversity and infinite combinations. That's what the universe is here for, is to learn every possible being, every possible scenario that can exist. And so from that point of view, you are necessary for the existence of the universe because otherwise there will be a hole in the divine. And so it's your response, not only just, you know, okay, well, I gotta, I gotta take care of myself and blah, blah, blah. It's you, that's your only responsibility to the universe is being true to yourself because no one else can be who you are. No one like you has ever existed. No one like you will ever exist again. You have a unique frequency, a unique song that has never been heard and never will be heard again. And so it's, it's your responsibility to allow that song to be heard, to radiate outward. Um, and so when you have that confidence to know where your boundaries are, um, because he can roll up in a ball at any time and be safe, that gives Armadillo the courage to, to investigate, to explore, to step outside his comfort zones, right? Because he knows he can be safe at, at a second, at, you know, a split second. He can roll up and be safe. Um, and so it's like when you know that you're safe and the fact is that it's who you are that makes you safe. When you are your authentic self, you are naturally protected. You have natural protections that emanate from you, from the truth of your being, from the innocence of your being, the purity of your being. The more we try to put on armor or shield ourselves from outside things, the more we're dimming our light. And the world needs your light right now. And so don't hide it under a bushel. The other, another aspect of Armadillo, and I'm looking at kind of the way the cards are relating. The fact that, that Hummingbird is here, even though it's in reverse. Reverse just means that those, these are the things that are in transition. These are the things that are kind of 
happening behind the scenes. Um, and they're in reverse because they haven't quite blossomed yet. They're like the seed in the ground that hasn't quite poked its head above the dirt yet. And so it's still in motion. It's still in transition, right? And so you're building up your confidence. You're building up your self-worth to the point of knowing that you are worthy of, of being really right and the fact that hummingbird is in the center so the center is the spirit card the hub of what the wheel that all the others revolve around um one of armadillo's aspects is that they dig right those great big claws <coughs> they can go through termite mounds as if they were butter and so this shows how you are not someone who is satisfied with just the surface of things, the small talk. You want to know why. You want to dig into things, find out why things are the way they are, what's going on behind the scenes, what are the mechanics of it, why does it happen that way. And so this is giving yourself permission to move forward because as you dig in, you get closer and closer to your joy. When, when, when something gets your attention and, and you become passionate about exploring this, it, that's your joy drawing you forward. Um, and so mentally we're learning. So again, armadillos in the east, which is air so that's the mental realm so mentally we are learning to shore up to to trust ourselves to trust how far we've come right none of none of if you're watching this you are not a beginner at the spiritual stuff um and you have done so much work and sometimes i know for myself i forget how long I've been at this. I mean, my entire life, technically. Um, and so, but it's like, we tend to forget that, or I do sometimes, and think I'm just some Johnny come lately and just kind of trying to figure things out. And then when I realize the depth of who I am, where I came from, all of my experiences, um, I think that's, a big part of what this is it's like it's time to really dig in to you know the thing that's coming to mind as a suggestion is to journal or if you have journals to go back and reread them and pay attention to how far you have come um, I have a blog um, it's actually goldenthreadroad.blogspot.com um, and I am so glad I started it. I don't know how many years ago it was at least 10, 12, 15 about my spiritual path. And now when I start to forget who I am, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it, I look back on my blog. It's like, oh, that's right. That happened. Oh my God. And that led to, to that. And all of a sudden, I realize I have all these experiences that lend, lend, um, to lend themselves to what I do here in my readings to share my path, to share my experiences and my um, best guesses of what happens and, and that kind of thing. So own your space. Don't give up your power to anyone. If anyone tries to tell you what's best for you or who you are or what you're supposed to do, nope. Just curl up in the ball and, and roll away. You don't need to engage them. Sometimes the only way to win is to not engage. Right? So... I'm going to jump over to the west. 
which is water, so that's the emotional realm. And over here we have bear in reverse. <coughs> and that's actually perfect for this time of year because we are still in the dark half of the year. Thursday we start moving more toward the light, but at the moment we are in the dark. And, you know, Bear is in her cave right now, dreaming away and planning her, you know, who she wants to be when the, when the light gets stronger, when the, when, the, when the weather warms up or whatever. And so right now, emotionally, we're going deep, right? We're digging deeper with our mental and our mental realm, showing ourselves up with what we believe, maybe using affirmations and journaling and that kind of thing for the mental realm. Meanwhile, on the emotional realm, we're also um, looking inward, right? Because part of that connection we have with the earth and her cycles, all of the cycles that happen on the earth happen within us as well. And so this is the time when it's natural for us to be more tired, to be less, have less energy because all our energy is going inward to change things from the roots up, right? And so you're not going to have the energy you normally do. We think this, this, this season is to you know, even speed up and to get as much stuff done as we can and so many responsibilities when traditionally this was the time of year there were no fields to plant, no fields to harvest, no cattle to take care of mostly. And so it was a time of, you know, letting the fields go fallow, like just letting everything go wild. And because it's cold and snowy and whatever else um, and dark, it's the time when we gather closer together around the fire, around the hearth, around the kitchen, right? And we connect more with each other. Um, it's the darkness that draws us together closer than, than the light. Um, I have a, a, some friends, other shaman, shamans that we, we have this monthly Zoom call that we do together to kind of um, do shamanic stuff. And this time we all did a journey to ask for a teaching on the importance of the returning light. And of course, mine, as always, was really different from everyone else's, at least on the surface. And this walrus showed up. This walrus who lives in the Arctic, where not only is he, does he spend a lot of time in the dark of the, the depths of the water, but, you know, half the year there's hardly any sun. Sometimes there is no sun. Um, and so he was telling me that when that light comes back on solstice, when the light starts to increase, we think, we think so like one-sided or in duality, right? We think dark and light as in black and white. And we think light as just light when light actually also includes temperature and light brings energy and light brings color. When we're in the, in the, light half of the year when the light is stronger than the dark, we have more energy. Things are in bright, brilliant color, right? And when you have that color, you have individuality. You have the, the um, be able to distinguish between things and beings and such. But when it's dark, everything is one. There's no differentiating, right? And so it's like the roots of the trees, how they're all connected underground in the dark. But when they come out of the ground, they reach for the sky, you get the individual trees. So right now we're in the dark. Right now is a time for oneness, to be close to your family, whether your blood family or your family of friends, 
of your chosen family and to be one with the darkness. The darkness is the cosmic mother, right? I have read that Bear was the very first deity ever worshipped by humans. That she is literally the great cosmic mother. And it's the darkness of the cave is that is the womb of the cosmic mother. And in that womb, every possible reality exists. And so we get to dream and create, and whether it's daydreaming or night dreaming, um, doing creative projects, you know, that's the time when people knit or crochet more or do art, right? Because we're going inward more. And so it's, it's like the light is more concentrated. And so we explore our oneness with the universe. We explore our oneness, our connection with everything. Um, and really hearkening back to the fact that we are each a part of the divine. We are each part of source. There is no separation. And in the darkness, it's easier to remember that because everything is just one darkness, right? So we're doing really good work here. Um, creating those, the mental, the mental barriers, the mental boundaries, the mental um, scaffolding to uphold our coming emotional rebirth, right? Um, in the north, which is the place of earth, so that's the physical reality, um, we have beaver in reverse. And beaver is, <coughs> beaver is the industrialist of the animal kingdom. Beaver is the visionary of the animal kingdom. Where other animals just see trees and bushes, beaver sees uh, dams and lodges and what can be built from those resources. Beaver sees beyond the, um, the apparent physical of things and sees to what can be done with them, how they can be brought together in new ways and new creations. And and it's about building, it's about bringing things together, right? Um, that's why so many baking shows are so popular. I remember back, back when I was married, like a thousand years ago, um, my ex-wife actually went through a, a year of cancer and um, it was like everything in our lives were falling apart, right? And one of the things that helped me get through that period was Martha Stewart. I would sit and I would watch Martha Stewart, Stewart for hours. And I realized at one point how soothing it was. Number one, her voice was that soft and calm and she was creating, she was building, she was bringing things together in new patterns to create something that never existed before. While the rest of my life was falling apart, I had this one lifeline to someone who was actively putting things together, right? And so, You can trust if things are falling apart right now, like they are for so many people, you can trust, number one, that there is a purpose to it. There is a reason for it. That these changes and this disruptive period is not um, by accident. And that things are not just falling apart. Things are actually falling into place, right? And so, we have to go through a period 
you know, and this, this is so perfect with those three, the armadillo, bear, and beaver, because we're setting up these boundaries. We're digging deeper into who we are, contemplating who we are as divine. And this is listening to these dreams and actually bringing them into manifestation. And so for if you're watching this, there is something big coming for you in the physical realm. Um, a lot of times beaver is kind of a, a service card, meaning that whatever you do, you're going to be adding to Uh, bringing people together, helping others, and it, not necessarily even going into a career or a position that technically does that, but like Beaver, who all Beaver is doing is listening to his heart and doing what he is called to do, doing that thing that he can't not do. It's that one thing he has to do it in order to to live, in order to be joyful. It's like that's his vocation, that's his calling. He's not doing it necessarily to benefit everyone else, but by listening to his heart, following his vision, doing what feels right, like like the Tao, like the watercourse way, the way of least resistance, which is also the way of deepest joy. He automatically helps the entire woodland by creating uh, water features for more animals to drink or to even be born into or creates marshes that help to um, soak up the rain so that there aren't floods, etc., etc. So everything he does benefits everyone around him, but he's just doing it because that's what he is called to do. And so in this, part of this um, quarter of the year, from solstice to, to equinox, is really contemplating what is it that brings you your joy? What, what is your vocation? Who do you want to be when you grow up? And the thing is, Beaver's greatest accomplishment is not necessarily the dam, but in many ways it's the lodge because he builds this structure, this solid structure, impenetrable structure, sounds familiar, in the middle of the water, right? But it's anchored in the earth underneath the water and it stands up above the water and it's impenetrable. And so in the middle of this tossy, turvy, uh, wavy, current world full of back and forth, and um, there is this stable, solid structure that is a shelter. In the middle of the wet and the cold and the constant change is a place of stability, of warmth, of, of love of dryness and so it's like by following your own vocation whatever that is listening to your heart and just moving forward um, you will do more good in the world than you will if you deny what you want to do and do things out of obligation and think you have to save the world Right. One thing that Abraham Hicks said that's really stuck with me is that um, you want to save the world, you want to heal the world, but the fact that you think you have to is what gets in your way of actually doing so. Because just doing you by being yourself, answering those calls of intuition and passion you automatically heal the world, right? The other thing with Beaver to remember is that if you are given a vision, if you are feeling inspired to do something, 
the universe doesn't just go psych and then pull the rug out from under you. The universe is the one that gave you that vision, gave you that, that passion, those talents. The universe is also going to provide you with everything you need to manifest whatever that vision is. Right. And, and I had, I, this came up in a reading the other day and I had to clarify that, um, this doesn't mean you're going to have a full blown vision of exactly what everything is going to look like. It could be just a feeling, just following the breadcrumbs, right? But there's like a feeling of something in the future, something over the horizon. You might not be able to see it, to smell it, to know what it looks like, but you can feel it with your heart and you just keep moving forward toward that light. Um, Then, like I said, in the center, also in reverse, we have hummingbird. And hummingbird is joy. So hummingbird is the hub of the wheel. There's, there's an element of hummingbird in all of these cards, right? It's like realizing our joy is worthwhile, that it's valid, that it doesn't have to be defended that it's non-negotiable. Looking into ourselves deeper introspection in order to find what brings us joy. Not what could I do in the world, but what do I want to do? What is calling to me, right? And trusting those feelings, knowing that you don't, your job is not to figure out how to get there. Your job is just to hold that vision or hold that intention, and then the universe follows up and guides you because it's all leading toward this joy. And the fact that those four are in reverse, I think all it means is that we're in, we're, we're like rebooting, we're in a reset mode. We are, we have gone as far as we can denying ourselves, forgetting who we are, compromising our well-being for the well-being of society, and that it's time to reset that. And so we're going to sleep with bear and really, t so take that pause in between. <laughs> okay, that just reminded me of a, that joke I told before about a polar bear walks into a bar and he says, I'll have a beer. And the bartender says, why the big pause? And polar bears always had them. So taking a big pause to allow things to sink in for things to germinate. You know, we've planted the seeds already and now it's the time to allow the seeds to do their work. We can't keep digging them up and poking them and opening them. Come on, are you there? Are you there? that is counterproductive, then nothing is going to grow. We planted our seeds. We have to trust our guidance, trust that um, we live in a friendly universe. The universe is safe, friendly, and abundant. And, and in, a, in a friendly, safe, abundant universe, everything you need is provided. Everything that happens has, um, is, the universe will use whatever is in front of you to bring you home. Whatever is in front of you can be used as a springboard to get where you're going, rather than resisting it, rather than fighting it. And so always go toward your joy. It's like this is, this is what's in store. It's kind of like if you think about this um, spread the medicine wheel spread, it's like starting in the east, going around the spiral into the center. This is your destination. This is where you're headed. You might not know how to get there. You might even think that you, you, don't, you can't feel joy anymore. You don't know what joy even means. And so the key is surrendering. One of the lies that we're fed 
is that the harder we work, the more the payout. The harder we work, the better we'll you know, the better we will be able to find ourselves. We have to work, work, work. We have to keep pushing and pushing to find something, to find the top of that mountain, to find the grail. But you are already whole. You are already well. Well-being and joy is the default setting for your soul. Whether you realize it or not, because you've had heaps and heaps of things buried, burying you. Um, thanks for that. New earworm to dream the impossible dream. Um, and so you've been you've been cut off from your core, your soul, your heart, which is the essence of joy. And so it's by looking inward and surrendering to who we are already rather than trying to push through all the darkness and the hard um, challenges to get someplace else. Everything you need is here and now. It's just a matter of remembering it. This is the light a solstice about to be born. This is joy. This is sovereignty. This is um, letting go of everything that holds you down, letting go of all the ballast so that you are, you, you, you're this big because you don't need anything else, right? You're not really this big, but metaphorically, it's like you don't need all the things to prop yourself up. When you drop all of those things, you become almost lighter than air. And when you're that light, you don't have all that baggage, you can zip back and forth almost faster than you can see. And you can, you can turn almost right turns in, in mid-flight. You can go in any direction. You can hover. You can even fly backwards. Hummingbirds are one of the only animals that can fly backwards. And so by dropping all the, all the fallacies, all of the old beliefs that we thought we were, that we've been told that we are, we can reveal what's underneath it. It's more of, and that's like both of these really, it's like digging in, digging for the truth, digging for buried treasure, because your truth is already in there. You just have to uncover it. Right. And, and, and sitting in the darkness, knowing that you are enough, you don't have to defend yourself. You don't, you don't have to earn your place on this planet. If you're here, you're needed. If you're here, you are loved. If you are here, you are necessary. And if you look at the bigger picture of the world and see the re how the bigger world kind of reflects what each of us is going through individually right now. The world is in the giant identity crisis. Trying to figure out who, who it is, all these individuals vying for importance, thinking that they're more important than other people, that other people are less important. But there is no one that is more important than you are. There is no one less important than you are. We are all divine children of Creator. And it's by bringing that, that joy and that light forward, radiating it out, that's the shell of, of armadillo that keeps anything that would conflict with us or harm us at bay. When you're radiating out, the, 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 the higher you raise your frequency, it's actually dropping more into the light and the joy that you are. And the more, the deeper you get into that authenticity, that purity, 
the more light and love you radiate outward, which keeps anything from coming inward. And so it becomes that hard shell on the outside that allows the soft inner um, underbelly to thrive. So those are the things that are in transition right now. When it, and it's really not surprising to have four out of the five cards in reverse because this is a time of contemplation. This is a time of napping and getting together with family and friends and telling stories and singing songs, right? It's a time when the outer energy goes inward. And so don't push yourself. Most of all, don't judge yourself. If you're feeling tired, take a nap. Realize that you are connected to the rhythms of the earth, that you have the same rhythms inside of you. And if you're tired, it just means you need to sleep. Um, if you're hungry, you need to eat, right? There is no judgment in that. It's beyond judgment. It's beyond negotiation. You're tired. You didn't do anything wrong. It's not because you're weak. It's not because there's something wrong with you. You're tired because it's dark out most of the time. And so we don't have the energy coming at us like we do in the summertime when there's more light, right? And so it's natural to rest. It's natural to be less active. That's the natural order of things. All right, so that's the, the four that are in reverse, and I left the upright one for last. And that card in the south, which is the place of fire, so it's action and passion, we have a possum. Because fire is action and passion, I always think of the south, south card as kind of the card of purpose, because it's that passion within us, it's that desire within us to do what we love to do. Um, and it's interesting that a possum is opposite beaver in reverse. And so this is the key of what is going to manifest in the physical realm. And what a possum is, is realizing how do I put it into words? The illusion of this world. Possum is the actor of the animal kingdom. Possum plays dead. I mean, we even say play possum, right? In order to have predators lose interest. Um, now, if, if possum believes his own act, if he's such a great actor that he believes his act, He's going to die anyway because he'll, he won't regain consciousness, he won't feed, and he will just, then it's like a self-fulfilling prophecy, right? Oh, I'm playing dead, I must be dead. But, because he can see through the illusion of life, you know, the like, like almost every religion talks about the illusion of this world, the drama, um, the dream, the veil. And possum can see through that. And so it's, it's about remembering that. There's more of you that is unseen than there is seen. There's more of you that is non-physical than is physical. Got that from Abraham Hicks as well. But it, it's, um, you are not the actor. It's like this, this world, your life is a story. Your life is a production. It's a TV show. It's a stage play, right? And you are the star. But you realize 
if if you were if you were in a real play, you wouldn't mistake yourself for the character, right? That's the illusion we get caught into in this life that we are we are the personality, we are the ego, we are this physical meat suit and nothing more. But there is so much more to you than is apparent because you are not the act you are not the character you are playing in this life. You're the actor playing. Right? And There's this really good book. It's called The Education of Oversoul 7 by Jane Roberts, who is the one who channeled Seth back in the 70s. And it's about Oversoul 7. He's this Oversoul, right? And he's up here. And um, in, in the book, it's, it's, it's fictional, but it, it, it like makes so many points clear. Uh, about time and past lives and future life because Oversoul 7 is like in the book they put it in Monday they it's a uh, Oversoul 7 is this wench in a tavern in the Middle Ages and on Wednesdays he's this um, artist this this Renaissance artist and on Fridays he's in the 23rd century, but he's here all the time and all his lives are happening concurrently. You are not one of these people, one of these characters that, not to diminish who you are in this life. Don't get me wrong. Um, You are who you are in, in the physical world, but it's only a drop in the ocean of who you really are. And so as, you know, on the spiritual path, as we're trying to reveal our true self, get closer and closer to our original being, this is who we are up here. And who we are in this life, in your past lives, in your future lives. Those are characters in a play. Um, and so it's keeping that, you know, no matter what's happening, um, I should, as an example, I have these lovely graphic novels and comics and coloring books for for sale that make great holiday gifts. But <clears throat> so I have these characters that I draw that I've drawn since I was a kid, right? And <clears throat> they realize let me find a good one. They realize that they are, are the comic characters, that they are not that and they're living in a it's like they're always yelling at me. They're always peeking out of the comic, yelling at me, like, how could you do such a thing? That's not in the manuscript. Always yelling, Mr. Cartoonist Dude. And it's like, it's like that. We live in this world. We are, you know, in a comic strip. We're in a comic book. But we are also, we realize that we're in a comic book. And so... There's no fourth wall, like they say, in theater or in TV, right? People act as though it's there's four solid walls, but we're, when we're watching a TV show, we're looking through the fourth wall as if it weren't there. And then, like in Shakespeare plays, when the character has a soliloquy and they're addressing the audience, it's like that's going beyond the fourth wall. And there's so it's like bringing consciously into our daily lives that yes this is our world that we live in and there are certain laws and rules we need to abide by but at the same time we know that there is so much more beyond it right the other thing about possum is when you realize that as they say you're in the world 
not of the world, that you originate somewhere else, then like possum who is immune to venom and snake bites and toxins of all kinds, um, I've heard it, it takes 70 or 80 snake bites, like a rattlesnake bite, before possum will feel it. And so when you realize the illusory, illusory is that the word? Um, state of this world, you can't be as harmed by the slings and arrows that originate in this temporal world because you are eternal, right? You live beyond time. And so any injuries that are here are just temporary. Your true self, that self of joy and light, cannot be even touched, cannot be harmed. And so what I see here with these cards is that we're, we're, in, we're in a reboot, we're, we're in a reset. You know how you turn off your computer and you have you don't just turn it off and turn it right back on. You have to turn it off and you have to sit for a little bit and let everything wind down. And then you can turn it back on. We're in that reset right now where everything that we think we're, we're in this reset where we're turning everything off. We're going into the dark, into the cave, into the womb of the mother in order to reset and come back with the factory defaults, right? Um, and so be good to yourself this season. Allow yourself to rest. Allow yourself to take naps if you want to. Allow yourself to stay home rather than running like a chicken without a head, you know, to get all the shopping and obligations done. Your well-being is as important as anyone else's well-being and you serve others by answering to the joy within your heart. But the main key to all of this is to remember the temporary nature of this world. This too shall pass, whatever it is. Everything is temporary. All right, so that is our reading for tonight. Um, thank you to those who <laughs> stayed with me this long. I know it's been a long night and got off to a shaky start and everything, but thank you for your perseverance. Thank you for staying the course with me. Um, like I said, if you look on my website, perchingwolfstudios.net, I have comics and graphic novels that I have drawn. And I also have coloring books, the 12 Totems of Christmas, with the different animals of the different days of, the, of Christmas that you can color. I've got another coloring book. It's an ABC book with the animals that each, each letter has a different animal and there's a poem for each animal, what their medicine is, etc., and And I still have gift certificates. If you're needing a last minute holiday gift, I have gift certificates. You can give someone the, the gift of insight or the gift of healing. So again, visit my website to find that. Um, and you know, feel free to sign up for a session with me for a reading or a healing. Now that you've seen what a full reading looks like. Um, it's, of course, when you're, when it's a one-on-one, -on -one, I can go into deeper, more personal information of why these relate to you. But in the, the wider band of, of doing it for the community, it kind of loses some of that personal touch. But, um, if you enjoy my work, if you would like to consider having a reading with me or a healing with me or taking one of my classes, again, visit my website, perchingwellstudios.net. Um, please share this video. And when we are done here, I am going to share this video to my Facebook page and I'm also gonna upload it to my YouTube channel. 
I have a Perching Wolf Studios YouTube channel where I have like four years worth of these videos of ceremonial videos, of stories, of songs, different things. So check that out. Um, and again, I have my PayPal and my Venmo up on the comments. I'll have it underneath the video when I share it to my page. And if you feel like you want to support me in a financial way, I so gratefully accept any donations you would like to give and to support your local shaman. So, okay. feel really still a little ungrounded. I think it's still that Mercury retrograde, not to mention the rush of the season, trying to find our, our groundedness and centeredness and everything. So, I hope that is helpful. I hope you get something out of that reading. Um, and I also hope that you have a wonderful holiday season, holiday, whatever you uh, practice, um, whatever holiday you observe, whatever holiday of light, whether it's Christmas or Kwanzaa or Hanukkah or Festivus or Yule or Solstice, whatever it is. And next week, I am going to take the day off. Um, because it's actually Christmas and I will be home visiting my family in Minnesota. So um, no readings next Monday. And I haven't decided yet about New Year's because the following Monday is New Year's. And so stay tuned. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Um, I guess that's it for now. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for your perseverance through all the hiccups at the beginning and, and everything. And um, I hope to see you soon. And until I do see you again, know that I love you, that I see you, that I honor you. Have a wonderful couple of weeks. Have a good holiday season. Go enjoy yourself. And I will see you soon. All right. Go shining, everybody. Bye.